Praise God. We thank God for another wonderful morning that he has given us. And uh, it's by his grace we've managed to see this day. I'd like to request that we bow our heads as we close our eyes and have an opening word of prayer. Let's pray. Precious Lord, once again I come before your presence and I use the usual request quoting Samson who will say, Lord, remember me, I pray thee. Strengthen me this once more that I may at once avenge the Philistines of mine two eyes. So God, strengthen me, I pray you. Remember me, whisper to me those words of comfort that says that you have sanctified this ministry in this hour, that your children may hear you speak through me. So God, empty me of self, fill me with your spirit. God, take charge of this hour, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. In the program, it's written sickles and sheaves. I picked it from my brother, and uh, I will go with a quick one. He did Hope of the Ages yesterday. Today I want to do We Have This Hope. Let me just finish with We Have This Hope. After the Hope of the Ages presentation, let me just talk of We Have This Hope. Well, I was younger than this. There's a song that became so popular in my mind. He came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross. My debt he paid and from the cross to the grave and from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. He came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross. My debt he paid and from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high and i want to reflect on this under the theme we have this hope in fact i, I dare ask myself where is our hope where do we put our trust today i want to reflect on something that is painful the last time I was preaching, Jesus simply said, it is finished. The Bible says, when he had said, it is finished, he gave up the ghost. The creator, the one who had said, I am the resurrection and the life, gives up the ghost. So he dies. Beloved, let me say something. Death is painful. And I like saying this. Don't ask me, how do you know? Have you died? Death is painful. You don't have to die to know that death is painful. I know death is painful and uh, I've, I've experienced losing loved ones and such and death is painful. And even as we speak right now, there are people who have lost loved ones. And let me tell you, death is not a simple thing. And talking about how painful is death, I, I need to know, is there hope beyond this life? Is there hope beyond the grave? Is there hope beyond death? By now you may suspect that I used to love music when I was younger than this. But there is a song that was sung by my church choir in the early 90s. They would sing... The last enemy that must be destroyed is death, is death, is death. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And let me tell you, 
if the death question is not answered, I am scared. And you ought to be scared. Because wh why talk about eternal life if you can't even deal with death? How do you promise what you can't handle? Listen, you must be able to handle death for you to promise me life. So when the Bible says that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The question is, can you handle death? And that is a question Jesus has to deal with. Matthew. Matthew chapter 27. The Bible says, in verses 50, Jesus, when he had cried with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And when Jesus yielded up the ghost, the Bible says that the curtain of the temple was torn into two. But, but, but that's not the big thing. The earthquake, that is not the big thing. Jesus has died. And let me tell you, my Savior, I, I, I told us the other day that, that Jesus confirmed the victory at the cross. He went and died the death on the cross. But let me tell you, Jesus died on the cross and there are people who have died on the cross. Where is the difference? Jesus died and people have died. So by the time Jesus is dying, that's why when you go and talk to Cleopas and his friend in the book of Luke, I, I, I like when Cleopas and his friend, they, they, were, they were walking and, and Jesus asked, this is Luke chapter 24, Jesus asked them, what is it that you're talking about? And they said in Luke 24, reading from verses 19, they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and they have crucified him now listen to the next text he says but we had trusted that it had been she which should have redeemed Israel in other words that's our hope on Friday Friday ended with our hope being crucified upon the cross you know what it means when, when your hope says it is finished you know what it means when the one who multiplied fish and multiplied bread cannot now be able to bring water all he can say is I thirst you don't know what it means for the disciples to sit there and see that the one they had trusted in is being nailed to the cross. They had thought this. Couldn't he have performed one last miracle? We had seen him do miracles, but, but now we are trusted in him. That's what Cleopas and the friends say. We had this hope in him. Disappointed us. We are trusted in him that he should redeem Israel. Besides all this, apart from that fact, this is the third day since these things happened. Let me tell you, nothing takes God by surprise. I say things can happen that shock us, but nothing takes God by surprise. And so I, I go back and ask, Cleopas, come and watch. Let's go with you back, Cleopas. To Matthew chapter 27. The Bible says after Jesus had died. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 57. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea. Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and begged for the body of Jesus. Pilate commanded the body be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen. And he laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn out of the rock and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed now the bible writes that so that you understand i like telling people read the bible to the dots he rolled a great stone this was not a small stone it was great so that when the stone is rolled away you can know a great stone had to be rolled away there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. 
But look, Jesus dies on Friday. And on Saturday, the Bible says in, in verses 62 of Matthew 27, Now the next day, the day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Chief priests and the Pharisees are coming to Pilate on the Sabbath. The people who are telling Jesus, why are you breaking the Sabbath, are willing to break the Sabbath just so that they can see Jesus dead. Let me tell you, Sabbath keeping tithe payers can do to you serious things on earth. They can make your life miserable. They don't break the Sabbath, but they break hearts. They don't break the Sabbath, but, but they injure people seriously. It's tough. They can come. And let me tell you, on Sabbath, they are sanctimonious. They are walking as though some angels left heaven for a few minutes to patrol earth. And they are about to go. But let me tell you, these same people will hate you with so much hatred, you feel like you'd rather die than survive that kind of a hatred. These are the people. And let me tell you, they're the ones who are telling Jesus, but, but wait, why are you healing somebody on Sabbath? But here they are not to heal somebody on Sabbath. They are to confirm that the dead person is dead. Let me tell you, when you have bitterness in your heart, it can even obscure the desire to serve God. Look at the Pharisees and the chief priests. They come to Pilate and they say in verse 63 that, Sir, we remember that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Why are you worried about the things that a liar has said? If he was a deceiver and he said after three days, why are you worried? After all, he lied. It could be that they were scared. They thought this guy. Even if we are saying he's a liar, but this guy, he can do things. We remember that great deceiver. He said, I will rise after three days. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre can be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said, you have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. I'm no Bible scholar, but I, I, I just speak the words as I read them. Make it as sure as you can. It's as though Pilate was saying, if there is any mistake, don't blame me. Just do your best. Even me, I think this guy is no jokes. He may, he, there is a possibility he may rise, but I don't want the blame to be put on me. So you take all the guards. And they took a hundred soldiers. Ah. Time will not allow me, but let me tell you, the moment you take a hundred soldiers against Jesus Christ, they brought a hundred witnesses. Please, be careful when you're dealing with my Savior. They brought a hundred soldiers to go and watch over the tomb. And I like saying, the Bible says, so they went, they made the sepulcher. Sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch, a hundred soldiers with a centurion at the head, and they were there at the tomb and watching Jesus as he lay. But you know what? My Savior is the King of kings and Lord of lords. While he is resting, he needs some people to just guard. In fact, th 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 these people came there, they thought that they were... By the way, how do you protect Jesus? You need the protection of Jesus. I told people the other day, please don't defend God. You don't need to defend God. Let God defend himself. You're not here to defend him. My God is not that weak. So they, they, they came there, they sat around there. But I, I, I see my Savior laying his life down and he's like, these people have come for a, a worship session. I'll give them some time. Let them relax through the night. On Friday, you know why? They were awake the whole day, terrified, on Thursday. Let them relax, and they relaxed. But the Bible says in verse 28, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. And you know, th th these are questions that we, we, we really don't need to labor over. 
I've had people question which day is the Sabbath. But let me tell you, if I tell you I'm going to pay you salary on Sabbath, you will know which day it is. It's only difficult to know. You say, what if I start counting my first day on Tuesday? You can do that. But if somebody promises you come for a job on the third day of the week, you will have no problem knowing which one is the first day. But that's a story for Bible study. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn on the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Now, when you read the text, it says, Behold, there was a great earthquake. Now, that is not sequential. As it is written over there, it is not sequential. The earthquake did not happen after Mary and, the, and Mary Magdalene came. No. The earthquake preceded that. You see what happened is, early in the morning, when the time came for my Savior to arise, the Bible says in verse 2 of Matthew 28, Behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. Now, these are some of those texts. I, I've preached this over and over again. By the way, this is one of my favorite sections of the scriptures because it just gives me hope. But, but, but I, I understand why the Bible will say he sat on it. He just didn't roll the stone away. He, we are not stealing Jesus. You don't steal my Savior. You open the door for the King of Kings to get out. You know, Jesus is rising. Jesus is rising as a King of Kings. He's rising as a conqueror. And conquerors don't have to open doors for themselves. So the angel descends from heaven. The Father gives the command. And I see in my sanctified imagination, the heavenly council is seated. The angels are thinking, what do we do? And God says, and says, the, the, the pen of inspiration says, he said the mightiest angel, the one that took the position that the devil had left, when Lucifer fell from heaven, his position was taken by another mighty angel who came close to God. And at this point in time, I, I, I see the angel come down very first. As the angel comes down very first, something happens. He comes and the text says there was a great earthquake. Now these are the moments I walk into sanctified writings and in manuscript 115 of 1897, inspired writings say, which I don't want to doubt because I believe in inspiration. Before anyone had reached the sepulcher, there was a great earthquake. The mightiest angel from heaven. He who held the position from which Satan fell received his commission from the Father. There was an angel just waiting for the Father to give him instructions. He received his commission from the Father. And clothed with the panoply of heaven, he parted the darkness from his track. His face was like lightning. His garments were white as snow. And as soon as his feet touched the ground, it quaked beneath his feet. I always say, what do you think was the speed of the angel as he was coming? The angel must have come so fast that when he did an emergency break on planet earth, there was an earthquake. The pen of inspiration says, the Roman guard were keeping their weary watch when this wonderful scene took place. They were enabled to endure the sight for they had a message to bear as witnesses of the resurrection. This angel approached the grave, rolled the stone away as if it had been a pebble, a small stone, and sat upon it. And the light of heaven encycled the tomb. The whole heaven was lighted by the glory of the angels. Then the voice was heard. Thy father calls for thee. Now listen, this is the part I like. When the instruction is given, your father calls for you. Jesus summons divinity and brings himself back to life. That's why the Bible says, I have the power to lay down my life. And I have the power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my father. 
John chapter 10 and reading from verses 17. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Jesus laid down his life. His life was not a life that was taken. His life was a life that he laid down out of love. And when the right time came, he summoned life back. And Jesus resurrects. And when Jesus resurrects, this sight, there are so many Roman soldiers around. I've always said, as I walk through my sanctified imagination, that when Jesus was resurrecting. The soldiers who were there watching were so terrified. In fact, the Bible says, let me just read it for you. It says in, in verses 4 of Matthew 28, that for the fear of the angel, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Battle-hardened Roman soldiers became as dead men. Could do nothing now. Afraid. Shaken. And when you read, it says, the angel said unto the woman, fear ye not. Now that one is another part that I tell you, it is, uh, it is not sequential. The women came afterwards. The angel sat upon the stone. But let me, let, me, let me finish with the soldiers. You know today, the soldiers are the witnesses. Those who questioned Jesus are the witnesses. The soldiers sat there. In fact, when you read in that marvelous book, Desire of Ages, page 781, paragraph 1, it says, At the sight of the angels and the glorified Savior, the Roman God had fainted and become as dead men. When the heavenly train was hidden from their view, they arose to their feet, and as quickly as their trembling limbs could carry them, they made their way to the gate of the garden. Staggering like drunken men, they hurried to the city, telling those whom they met the wonderful news. They were making their way to Pilate. That morning was not ushered in by the cocks crowing. The morning was ushered in by the thumping foot leather of the Roman soldiers as they went through the city. And they were telling each other, did you just see what I saw? I can't believe it. That was tough. And they, 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 they said that, that was serious. And in my sanctified imagination, I, I just want to think one of them must have been sweating. No, not one of them, all of them. Who survives such a sight and you keep quiet? All of them were sweating and terrified. But they said, man, in all my life in the army, I have never seen this. I know. In all my life. And they kept on. And everyone they met, they didn't say good morning. They said he's alive. He's risen. Everyone they met on their way as they went, they just told them he's risen. They did not have so much to say. But the Bible says, if you read, the Bible says this in verses 11 of Matthew 28. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed the high priest all the things that were done. The Bible says that the high priest were told everything that was done. And when they had assembled the elders, they had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers and told them, say, his disciples came by night and stole him away. They woke up that morning and read with the burden of the message of truth of a risen savior. But after they had met the chief priests, they left there with the burden of money to go tell a lie. But that doesn't take my savior to die. In fact, in Desire of Ages, page 782, paragraph 1 says, A lying report was then given to the soldiers, saying, Ye, the priests, told them. His disciples came by night and stole him away. Here, listen to what the messenger to the remnant says, Here, the priests overreached themselves 
How could the soldiers say that the disciples had stolen the body while they slept? If they were asleep, how could they know? And if the disciples had been proven guilty of stealing the body, why would the, pri the priests not have been the first to condemn them? Or if the sentinels slept at watch, why were they not going to be accused before Pilate? I say one thing. Have a good memory when you want to lie. Don't just lie without planning. Plan how you want to lie systematically. But they forgot. But let me tell you, my Savior is risen. And because I serve a risen Savior, let me finish with this. And why do we have hope? Because he's alive. The Roman soldier says he's alive. And everywhere the shout is he's alive. And that gives me hope. So let me tell you, life may be difficult, but I'm not yet dead. Life may be difficult. Even Elijah rose somebody from the dead. Even Elisha brought somebody from the dead. Lazarus was risen. But nowhere do we find somebody died and raised himself up. But Jesus did it. So he's conquered. I am hopeful. You, you know, it becomes difficult if you say, but now where can we get Elijah nowadays? Now we don't need Elijah. Jesus has already conquered death. Let me finish with this text. Let me just finish with this few texts. I know my time is up, but I am I'm assuming that I started uh, two or three minutes late. So let me just read these texts, which are powerful. To, to, to just put this to arrest. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 11, Therefore, whether I or they, so we preach, so you believe. Now, if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead, how do some people say there is no resurrection from the dead? But if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, our preaching, our camp meeting is in vain. This thing makes sense because Christ is risen from the dead. And listen, it says, yeah. And we are found to be false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Jesus, whom he raised not from the dead, if the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. You are yet in your sins. And listen to verse 18. Verse 18 finishes by saying, Then also they which are fallen asleep are perished. Our dead loved ones are perished. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most miserable. Beloved, there is hope because Jesus is risen from the dead. There is hope because he's in charge. He has given us the assurance that he's in charge. I normally finish with a song. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. But I love the part that says, this life is worth a living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth a living just because he lives. We have this hope because Jesus lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby. And feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face and certain days because he lives. Let me tell you, you can face and certain days. Because he lives. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know. Because I know. 
He holds the future. And life is worth a living just because he lives. Let me tell you, don't give up on life. When it's tough, don't give up. Life is worth a living. Let's live because he lives. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you. We are going through tough times in this life. This life has presented some of the most challenging moments to us. And as we begin this day, I put all the speakers into your bolands. I put all the activities into your bolands. God, let's not give up because of death. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, that you came and you tested death for every man. In fact, Hebrews 2, 14 will say, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He likewise took part of the same, that he might through his death destroy him that had the power of a death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. God, nothing should keep us afraid. We need to trust in you. Put in our hearts to trust in you. Is my appeal and prayer in this hour. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. Time keeper, I am sorry. <laughs>